Okay, so last week we looked at the uh, optimization options for saving an image for the web in Photoshop using this Save for Web dialog box. And uh, in the resources for last week, there was some information about some other export options that you have under the export menu, uh, such as quick export, export as, and those are useful uh, in the more kind of modern way to export images for the web, but this Save for Web dialog box uh, is good for kind of previewing what's going on with the image and comparing the different compression formats. So that's why I chose to show it to you in that in this dialog. And one part of the compression that we didn't deal with and didn't talk about last week is transparency. You can see that listed right here as a option in the uh, in the Save for Web dialog box. And so some of these compression file formats have the ability to include transparency in the file when it's compressed. And so what transparency means in Photoshop is that uh, this image, for instance, of the soccer ball has no transparency at all. It's completely opaque. You see grass, the ball, the painted line, and that sort of thing. Uh, but I've prepared this, images, this image ahead of time to show you some transparency. And I'm going to do another video to show you how to take an object out of its background to get this transparency. But uh, if I remove the background from the soccer ball, remove the grass, and then remove the white background, you see this checkerboard pattern. And this checkerboard is transparency in Photoshop. So the way to think about that is this is like I have a sticker of a soccer ball stuck onto a piece of glass. And wherever you see this checkerboard in Photoshop, that is transparency. That means it's completely transparent, see-through. And so uh, if I were to move the soccer ball now, for instance, onto another image, like the soccer player image, it comes in as just the ball. So I have the ability to uh, have transparency in the image. And so if we wanted to put this image into a web page without all this grass in the background and all that stuff, but just the soccer ball, and not have a rectangular square like this, we need to know how to compress the image so that it can contain that transparency. So that's what we're going to look at it right now. So I'm going to go back to the Save for Web dialog box. And you might notice that that screen, for me, just kind of pops up onto the screen like this. And that's because I'm using this keyboard shortcut, Command, Shift, Option, and S. That's on the Macintosh. If you're on a PC, it would probably be Control, Alt, Shift, and S. But you can check your keyboard shortcuts just by looking out here to the right of the menu command. Some of them don't have keyboard shortcuts like this one, but if they do, a good way to learn the keyboard shortcut is just to see it there, press those keys without clicking, and you'll get a handle on what the keyboard shortcuts are. So now I'm in the Save for Web dialog box, and I'm looking at these same compression settings over here, and the same file formats, JPEG, GIF, and PNG, have some compression options, uh, or sorry, transparency options that you can set. And the first one with JPEG, there's, uh, I'm just going to switch this optimized view because I don't need to compare right now so you can see a little bit better. So this is just the optimized version. You can see the original has transparency. And when I'm optimizing in JPEG mode, I don't have transparency as an option. So anytime that I optimize a transparent image using JPEG, the transparent parts get covered up with a color, in this case white. And the reason that white is the color that's being chosen is because of this right here, matte. So you can see right there as I uh, hover over that, it says defines color to blend transparent pixels against. So that is the uh, color that transparency will be blended with because a JPEG cannot have any transparent areas. It will be completely opaque. So I can choose the color that I want to use. So let's say I choose this red up here. I'm just clicking on the matte color right there. And by using the color picker, I can select what color the transparency is going to be replaced with in this soccer ball image. But with the JPEG compression, I cannot have anything be transparent, so the matte is my only choice. And white is the default color for that. So 
essentially, if you're working with transparency in an image, most of the time JPEG is not going to be a good choice for compression unless it's okay with you that it gets a solid color background wherever the transparent pixels were in your original Photoshop image, wherever the checkerboard pattern was. It's going to be replaced by this matte color. If we do want to have transparency, we've got to use one of the other compression file formats. And those are JPEG, or sorry, GIF and PIN. So let's look at GIF. I'm going to choose GIF 64 dithered, let's say. And the, the uh, soccer ball looks pretty good with this compression format. And you can see that in GIF, I do have an option for transparency. So if I turn that off, I have the exact same situation with the matte color. The transparency will be replaced with the matte color. So that is uh, works very much like JPEG, but in GIF I can turn on this transparency setting. And now I have the option of having a transparent background on this image. GIF transparency is either on or off, so that means that the transparent areas are, uh, are cannot be halfway transparent. So I'm going to zoom in on this so you can kind of see what I mean. On the edges of this ball, what I actually have is an area of kind of gradual transition into transparency. So here's the ball, here's the transparent area, and right here you can see that there's kind of a gradual fuzz of transparency that goes on right there. And so transparency in the GIF, if I go to the optimized area, it does not gradually change. It just switches from 100% opaque to 100% transparent. So even though I do have the transparent areas out here outside of the ball, I still am using this matte color for where this blending of the kind of blurred edge of transparency happens. And so if I change the color right here to something else, you can see that I still am using the matte color. And when I zoom back out, there is going to be a area around something that you clip out in GIF file format where some matte blending is going to happen. So what you have to do is you have to know what color your background uh, in your web page is going to be before you trim the image out and save it as a GIF so that you can match the matte color to whatever color uh, your page is going to have. So we've got that. Uh, and I'm going to set that back to white for now. That's GIF. So GIF only has on or off transparency. Either things are either transparent or they're not. And there's no in-between. And there's always going to be use of this matte color right here, no matter what. The other option is ping. And you have 8 and 24. Ping 8 works just like GIF. So it's the same uh, on or off transparency as the GIF that we just saw. Ping 24, when I look at this one, we have transparency as an option, and matte, you see, has these little two dashes in it, because matte does not need to be used with ping 24 transparency. So when I zoom in on that, you can see that the ping, I'm in the optimized mode right here, I'm looking at the ping, it does allow for this kind of transparency, the, the uh, halfway transparency. So it's a much bigger file, but it does give you what's called alpha transparency, or this ability to have something be halfway transparent. You can see right down here in these settings at the bottom, that alpha term, when I move my cursor over the soccer ball, 255, that means fully opaque. Over here in the transparent area, it's the transparent area alpha is set to zero. And as I get into the fuzzy, fuzzy area right here in the middle, the alpha transparency is changing from zero to 255. So that's, that's varying levels of fully to non-full transparency right there. So I'm going to cancel out of here for a second to give you an example of how that would affect this soccer ball if I had something more uh, obviously 50% or, or not as completely opaque. So I have a drop shadow that I've added here. If I put the background on you can see there's the drop shadow showing up and I can adjust how transparent or non-transparent that shadow is by adjusting the slider right here. Adjust the opacity of the shadow. So there's my shadow. And when I, I'm going to turn this off so you can see that the shadow is kind of blending in 
with the transparent area back there. Uh, I'll make it a little bit darker so you can see it just a little better. So when I go back in to save for web dialog box now, in JPEG, it squashes it down to the white background or whatever color I use for the map. So that's uh, interesting, but not what I'm looking for. I want some transparency in my image. So if I use GIF, you can see that the GIF does this weird thing where because of the map, it does allow the transparency, but anywhere that there's any pixels with any amount of visibility to them, they get squashed in with this mat right here, and so I get this shadow with this big white area around it. And that would be whatever color I choose. So it does that too. Uh, so not ideal for a drop shadow to use the GIF compression. So swing, switch it over to ping 24. The ping 24 does allow me to have this background, so I can uh, this transparent shadow. It can blend right in with the page that I'm putting it over. Uh, and I'll shoot another quick video to show you an example of this on a web page, these different options on a web page in just a minute. But uh, that's the main thing I want to show you here about optimizing images with transparency with the three different file formats. You have no ability for transparency with JPEG. You have on or off ability for transparency with GIF and with ping you have the ability to have varying levels of transparency and that with the GIF and the JPEG options you can select what color your transparent areas blend with by choosing the matte color like this and all you have to do once you've got it the way you want it hit save so let's say I'll switch it to ping 24 other thing here this is a very big image 3000 pixels so I probably want to resize it to some more web-friendly size before I save. And then I'll save it on my desktop here. Soccer ball cut out. So I'll put a web page together quick and show you a, a, a little bit of information about how that would actually look in the page.